Well, together with me, ministering together with me is our sister Esther, and she really hammering the gospel as I say it, and she say it the way it is. Let's appreciate our sister Esther, who is helping me in sharing the word of the Lord. The Lord bless you. We are dealing with the giants. This life has so many giants. And uh, you remember where we started, we say some of these giants are stronger and they are greater than ourselves. But we know he that is in us is greater than he that is in the world. So whatever circumstance and situation we find ourselves, we have faith and we have hope that God who has given us victory will give us victory again and again. But some of the things that we have been looking at, you, some of you have not thought about them as giants. But after we have mentioned them, you can tell that giant of bitterness, how it has pushed you down, you know, until you are not able to move even an inch. And today we want to look at another giant, and this is the giant of anger, facing the giant of anger. I have been to an airport myself, and this airport had some problems. The problem was we had moved with Alice from Memphis to Chicago. We wanted to connect our flight from, uh, not Chicago, uh, another one in Michigan. Um, I will remember, an airport in Michigan, which connects the flights to uh, the KLM. You, we were picking KLM, and you can pick it from Atlanta or uh, that place. <laughs> I remember. Anyway, then they gave us a choice from Memphis that uh, you can go through Atlanta, but the flight in Atlanta has already left. But the only flight that you can go to is um, that place, <laughs> Taikumbuka. And, but the flight also has some mechanical problems, so you will not move today, you will move tomorrow. But they will take you to wonderful hotels there. They, they are wonderful hotels that they will take you so that you can rest for the night and live in them tomorrow. Which was like 12 hours, actually. Stay there until 12 hours the following day. Then we arrived, and we were many. We were not the only ones that actually, we met people that were not only going to Europe, they were coming to Kenya. A whole group of missionary, uh, over 12 people that were coming to Kenya. And we, we left Memphis with them, but we did not know. Then we landed uh, in that uh, airport with them, uh, the, 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 the airport for uh, Michigan. This is uh, the airport for Michigan. Now, uki kumbuka unaeza niambia. Hii ni mambo poasana. So in that airport, people were complaining and shouting. Because if you have been in an airport and flights are cancelled, people have a lot of problems. Because the first problem is, what will happen to the people that were waiting for me in Nairobi tomorrow morning? So that's the first problem. So they have to give you ways that you can call Nairobi to tell them that your flight has been delayed so you'll not get, arrive there the following day but the other day. Two, they have to put you into a hotel. So there is people running all over the place. But I don't know, uh, you know, at that point, I saw a lot of people angry and angered, you know, knocking tables and everything. But I, I, I don't know. Let me tell you, this is not me, but that day I felt like a lot of peace. A lot of peace. A lot of peace. So I was just watching whatever they, 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 they were doing and screaming. Then I went to the counter after my turn and I asked... Uh, the supervisor, what was happening. And I discovered she was also annoyed because we were annoyed. Now you're dealing with someone who is annoyed who has anger because you have anger. So first of all, anger has a way of hurting both the vessel that is carrying anger and the vessel that is being vented anger. So I, I said, Madam, I... Well, I'm traveling with my wife, we're here and we're going to uh, Nairobi, Kenya, and um, so what is going to happen? You know, she pointed at the seats that were in the airport, that you're going to rest there until tomorrow. Uh, and then I asked, 24 hours? She said yes. 
Uh, nothing else? She said, no. Then I ask, is there someone who supervises you? Do you have a supervisor? She told me, yes, but the supervisor will not do anything. I said, no, bring the supervisor. So the supervisor came and um, this supervisor was not even apologizing, but she said, oh, you know, uh, what we are going to do, we'll give you a, a, a hundred dollars that next time you travel, you can use this hundred dollars with your spouse. So it is a hundred for both of us and we can use it when we travel. Then, then I ask, well, how about the hotel accommodation and the transport, the tax transport to that hotel? She says there are no hotels around. Then I ask her, do you have a supervisor who supervises you? She said, yes, but my supervisor will do nothing. I said, let that supervisor come and tell me that. So the second supervisor came. Now this one apologized. And this one had a taxi for us. And this one has a, had a hotel for us. It doesn't matter where the hotel was and how the hotel looked like. But I discovered anger has a way of eating the person who is angry and the person who is hurt. People get a lot of... Even here, when we have been cancelled, a flight from Kisumo to Nairobi, you know, at Dega Imearibika, then we waited for an hour. Then they said, You know, we are there. And people are so annoyed and so angry. And there you are just asking, what is going to happen? People get annoyed, and you are annoyed with the wrong person because the flight does not belong to that guy there answering you. You, and to, but to understand that sometimes is where the problem is. Anger becomes a giant. For you and for the people you are venting your anger to. Is anger always wrong? And the answer is no. Anger is not always wrong. Because God is slow to respond in anger. His anger is balanced with his love and grounded in his holiness. Before we are too quick to justify our anger then, because some of you can try to justify your anger, let's look at God's example and characteristics of right anger. Psalms 103 and verse number 8. Psalms 103 and verse number 8. The Lord is merciful and gracious. Slow to anger and plenteous in mercy. Nehemiah 9 and verse 17b. The B part of Nehemiah, which is there also. And it says this, thou, let's read the whole of it. And refused to obey, neither were mindful of the wonders that thou didest among them. But hardened their necks and in their rebellion appointed a captain to return to their... Now that is not where... I, can you give me Nehemiah 9.17b? Thou art a God ready to burden, gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and great kindness, and forsaketh them not. That's God we are talking about. So he is slow to anger and of great kindness. Naham, the book of Naham, chapter 1, verse 3a. The Lord is slow to anger and great in power. The Lord is slow to anger and great in power. That's A. And will not at all acquaint the wicked. He will not do it. But God is slow to anger. But I've also discovered, and I don't know about you, as you grow higher and as you rise in leadership, the greater the need to control your anger. Sadly, we often think it works opposite way. With greater power, we feel like we have the right to greater anger. Now that you have a father and a, you are also a father-in-law and you, you have great-grandchildren and great-grandchildren, sometimes you feel it's a right. Now I can command, I can feel annoyed and feel angry. But the Bible has so much to say regarding our anger. Anger. I don't know whether I said this here, but sometimes you get anger, then you ask yourself, who am I 
angry too. You remember as I shared, I told you sometimes, this guy who carries the message, a giant of bad news. This man who brings the bad, you get annoyed with them. They are not the ones that are doing it, but you get annoyed with them. Sometimes you get annoyed with the wrong person. You sucked by your boss, you get annoyed with your spouse. Your wife, you're not in talking terms, you get annoyed to your children. Your children, you're not in talking terms, the house girl has it. You have a problem with your house, how the chicken and the cats around know it, even the cows and the cow pains. You get anger and you vet it to the wrong people. Let's look at actually the book of Proverbs. Let's get a few, a few truths about it. We consider these Proverbs in the Bible. What do they say about anger? Proverbs 15 and verse 18. A wrathful man starts up strife, but he that is slow to anger appeases strife. So if you are slow to it, you will appease it. Proverbs 16 and verse 32. He that is slow to anger is better than the mighty. And he that ruleth his spirit than he that taketh a city. It's important. Slow to anger, you are better than the mighty. Proverbs 19 and verse number 11. The discretion of a man defareth his anger. And it is his glory to pass over a transgression. Think about that. Proverbs 25 and verse 28. He that has no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. This person, if you, ha you cannot control yourself, you are like a city. And they are using a city in those days because the protection of the city was the wall around it. So if you control your spirit, it's like you have a wall around yourself. So it is key for us. Proverbs 29 and verse 11. A fool uttereth all his mind, but a wise mind keepeth it till afterwards. You know, if, 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 if you meet somebody and they are talking, I have, and I've said here, one of the biggest problems of you and I is to answer before you have listened to the question. You have an answer. Well, first, first two sentences, you have an answer. And you have not even listened the whole thing. So what do you do? You interrupt the person. Then you talk, you talk. What happens is that even the person, what they were telling you, after a while they have also forgotten. Because you talk and you go to various places. So many conversations actually, you end talking so many things with no conclusions. But if you can control yourself, just, you control yourself, just listen. Just listen. Just say nimesikia. Don't just answer for the sake of answering. And you control yourself and you'll be blessed. So Proverbs 29, 11. A fool uttereth all his mind, but a wise man keepeth it. You, you are patient. I want to talk about a couple of points, maybe three points concerning anger. And I'll be done. Uh, I'll be done. Number one, the question I want us to ask. Is there such a thing as sinless anger? Je, kuna marakara abayo si dhambi. Siniswali mzuri. And even you at home as you follow, um, maybe think through. And uh, I hope hamutara karanya kwa chai ya mamaji huko nyumbani. I want us to look at the text that I would have read first. Ephesians 4, 26 to 32. Ephesians 4, 26 to 32. Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Neither give place to the devil. Let him that stole steal no more. Hallelujah. But rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that needed it. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of a defying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. 
And grieve not the Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. So, from that text, it is admonishing us and you that yes, you can be angry and sin not. What does that kind of anger look like? Because Zambi Nyingi, Hasira, Hasara. You know, Zambi Nyingi. Uguna Kasirika. Somebody has to have it. Either the person next to you or you are venting your anger like. Looking at our example, we see that the anger of Christ was never in response to wrong done to him, but instead was a response to an offense committed against God's righteousness. Teachers that are here, don't gain children. But the principal can. Why? Because it is not an offense to the principal. If the teacher that the offense has been done, Rosemary, is the one dealing with that child, hio ni vita kali. But if by the time it has gotten to the principal, it has cooled, and the principal will do it in a different way. Though he will be, there will be anger in the principle, it is not the same anger with the teacher. Because the teacher will be disciplining the child for the wrong done to who? To the teacher. But Jesus is annoyed and angry, not because of what has been done to him. They called him names. But because of the people, what they were doing against the righteousness of God. No wonder then, his anger is holy anger. Look at how he, he responds to offenses committed against himself. First Peter 2.23 Who when he was revealed revealed not again when he suffered. He threatened not but committed himself to him that judges righteously. The word re, revealed means to heap abuse upon. When we have abuse or perceived abuse heaped upon us, we want to respond in like fashion immediately. Actually, some of you and I, we listen to a person and as they speak, we are asking, what are they saying? Are they belittling me? You know, you already, you are armed. What, what is the talk going to? Actually, some of you listen with this mind. Where is this talk going to? You have never asked yourself, could this talk be going nowhere apart from where we are? If you do that, then what happens? Anger. Una, at an, karibu, karibu upige mtu bure. Because you are waiting for something, but nothing happens. Aristotle said this. A man who is angry on the right grounds, against the right persons, in the right manner, at the right moment, for the right length of time, deserves great praise. And this is demonstrated by the life of Christ. I want to repeat that again. A man who is angry on the right grounds. Yani, ame kasirika kwahaki. Against the right person. You are not against anybody else, but that person. In the right manner, you are not sinning, right manner. At the right moment, so that you don't carry it over, for the right length of time, that person deserves praise. Because many of us, we react quickly, we move very fast, and we miss the whole point. So point number two, what are the characteristics then of sinless anger? Characteristics of sinless anger. Number one, Sinless anger is unselfish. Sinless anger is un uh, unselfish. Responsive anger or sinful anger is always rooted in self-interest. You are defending yourself. You know you, uh, why did you say this? When, 
And sometimes when you say it, you never meant what they got. Because you see, communication, what you are hearing me say and what I'm saying, maybe you need to listen to this message again so that you can hear what I'm saying before you make some conclusion that are not right. Often we are angry because we have been wronged. Our pride is offended. We are displeased about something. Sinless anger is not concerned with others, what others have done to me. The question is, and I have heard this, men have their ego. This woman is hurting my ego. Let me tell you, the ladies also have their ego. And this man is hurting my ego. And that can bring a lot of chaos. Anger. Sinless anger. Number B, or two, sinless anger does not nurse grudges. Doesn't keep <laughs> a fire going forever. It is now, it is finished. But when it is sinful anger, it has the record it, when it happened. What hour it was. Was it raining outside? Who had visited that day? It keeps it kabisa kabisa or the wrong done anaweka. Those, but if it is going to be sinless anger, it will not nurse grudges. If a fire in the forest goes down, ukute maka muhui meja. You will, you will know whether it is there is still fire there if you put your hand. If you puliza puliza kidogo na weke tukuni kidogo inawaka. And a lot of us are like that. Kamoto kale kali ulifikiria kama huu kameja. Kale kale kamoto kanagoja tutukuni kidogo na kaupepo. Then the fire again is burning in your house. Any anger that is nursed without being dealt with is in danger of becoming Vigilance. Ephesians 4.26 Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your earth. One time, the giant of anger transforms itself into another giant called bitterness. You remember the, the giant bitterness? So this anger coils itself, but one day it may turn out to bitterness. It is like a bird that builds its nest on a stake at a time. One in a noted wrong begins to build a home for nursing, a grudge, and becomes a base for which we launch our anger. Yani anger ni kama ndege, anachukua kamuti, anaweka. Akengine, anaweka. Badaya mejenga kiyota. Na wewe ukifanya hivyo, utajenga kiyota. Na inakuwa ni kazi ngumu. Because once a nest is built, you begin to lay eggs there that are going to hatch there and they are going to fly out to places beyond your control. Are you hearing that illustration? Yandege. Yani wewe ndi umejenga kiyota, utatega mayai ya hasira na hasara, hayo mayai ya hasira na hasara itaota, na kutazariwa tundege tuingine, na tutaanza kupa. So you will have a lot of children here who carries your anger wherever they are. May God help us to deal with this giant called anger. Number C or three, sinless anger is purposeful. Sinless anger is purposeful. Anger without a purpose is not a rebuke. Jesus' anger in the temple, the Gospel of John chapter 2, was for the purpose of cleansing. So his anger was to cleanse, and once the cleansing was over, there was no anger. It was not because he had been personally wrong, but because of the wrong committed against the holiness of God. It was purposeful. It was focused. It was directed over that particular problem. Where is your anger? Do you have a purpose for it? Or is it just an anger to annoy the other one? Christ's anger was purposeful. It was also controlled. Alipo apiga viboko, hakuenda kipiga kira mtu. And you know if you have anger that uh, is not controllable, utapiga watu, upige umbwa, upige kuku, upige nini, 
kwa sababu siko but if it is purpose you know for us that had parents that used to discipline us and some of us were really disciplined because we are bad we had the bad manners kuweka debe vibaya tunaichukua mwenyewe anasema aliona basi unakuta wazee you know, I still may God Pastor Francis Lord bless you that's my father hakupigi akiingia hana hasira ah hata mnapiga jokes umeshindaje poa eh shule ilikuwaaje fit alafu unapewa chakula wewe unafikiria amesahau lakini mkishakula chakula na mnaomba <laughs> mmasoma bible mnaomba alafu unasikia story eh, kemani you, you, you know i like that kind of anger you you, you don't hit everybody nani aliiba debe ya mtu hapa ni nani ah ah si unajua ni nani kwa hivyo wacha akule na mchie jokes hata hata niambiwe na niwe kudhoma ifukuria johana so i am reading eh na wewe tuogoze wimbo na tuimbe harafu tuombe hata labda hiyo siku ni mimi taambiwa no ho idhie so you can imagine you know this guy has no problem but after kimani and he had only one purpose to kutoa hiyo ujinga na utundu na anakuchapa vizuri kwanza ukilia anachapa zaidi anataka ulie ile ya inatokaka na huko ndani kama dunia yote ime <laughs> wacha hii akupiga nduru kijiji mzima ikuja hiyo ukipiga anaendelea kwa sababu hiyo haujapigwa bado my goodness have mercy anger with the purpose i was told by somebody who used to punish his children na akiwa punish anasema hivi moja bili tat wale wako nje <laughs> wanafikiria jamaa na uawa ndani that's not the real the purpose have a purpose sinless anger is purposeful number three, warnings regarding anger this is where we will be finishing warnings regarding anger god's repeat many warnings about anger throughout scripture colossians 3:8 but now you also put off all this anger wrath malice blasphemy few the communication out of your mouth often we try to simply curb our anger we we kind of have a will paper or will power that hinders or mask like we are putting our mask today over our range anger smolders beneath the surface and the teeth of our soul begins to grind under there with the frustration our anger as it continues to work within us if you are not careful what can happen when it resurfaces can be danger because it resurfaces with the tears that look more like hurt however we have learned that this is another way to hurt back so when you are hurt with your anger if you are not careful you hurt another i have always felt sometimes if somebody if you hurt somebody and you are not aware they respond and they make sure they hurt you too man two of you will be feeling so bad about the whole the whole thing like you don't want to leave anymore anger may come out as silence because we are re- resolved not to fight for you that are men and you have your spouse you have agreed we will never fight so how does anger come silent nail by mouth it may show up in a constant criticism because it is silent sasa mahali utapata nafasi una criticize it may strike out at a persons that have nothing to do with that correction that you are trying to do yani wewe ndio umekasirika umekasirishwa na huyu inatokea kule it reveals itself with a language that is uncontrolled and often that language could be veiled Maya it is seen when damaged when when 
in, in other words, when it is seen, when you come to see it, it has done its own damage wherever it has passed. James chapter 1, verse 19 and 20, the Bible says, Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to anger. Slow to, let, every, let every man, let's go back. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. How do we most often demonstrate our anger? How do we do it? Some of us are so cunning. We show our anger by we withdraw, isolation, no communication. Some of us do that. Others, they, they, they demonstrate their anger by yelling and shouting and name calling. Wait! Yo! Others express their anger by threats. You know, you threat. It's like a threat. And it is the same. Others, they lose control. Hey, they throw things. Kama kuna sahani karibu, ole wako sahani. Na kikombe, ole wako. Others, they start punching anything that is near. Kwa hivyo kama ni umu wakosea na uko karibu, unakuwa punching box. They will punch you. But all these things are representation of our anger and they are wrong. Withdraw is just as destructive to a relationship as violence. Ask someone who has experienced ongoing isolation from their spouse. They will tell you. Ata afadhalia ni pige kuliko kuninyamazia hivi. Because sometimes akikupiga inaweza isha. Lakini huyo anakunyamazia si ujui kama anawekaga kadhanua ama ameweka nyodo siku moja tu ni kukuangashia chini na kukupiga kichwa. You know, and we have had those cases. Anger. Anger. Ephesians 4:31 Let all bitterness and wrath that boiling that anger, that indignation and clamor that out and out, that outcry or an evil speaking or injurious speech that we have those those things be put away from you with all malice or the desire to injure you put it off because malice it is to desire to injure or hurt someone notice it does not say control your anger instead it says put it away don't control it if you control it it will come out but Chan and I put it away. Put it away. If we walked with you to cooperative bank over there, and there is someone shooting around us, shooting all around us, if somebody would ask you, do you feel okay? No, the bullets have not hit you. But they ask, do you feel okay? That is not the time to ask somebody, do you feel okay? Actually, it's a time to lay down and feel terrified. Matumbo. Hata ukijiguza guza. Ukisikia kakamaska na teramuka unafikiria ni damu. Yani bullet ilipigua pale. Damu imeanza kutokea pale. Unatoa? Oh. I don't want that kind of, of story. However, one of the greatest battles of life is the battle to put away anger. Don't rest because it's a bullet. Don't rest. Don't just be terrified by anger. Put it away. Weapons to fight anger. That's B part. Weapons to fight anger. Number one, commit your rights to God. What really makes you angry usually these things are your personal rights. He had no right to talk to me like that. Nani mdosi hapa? Who do you think you are? We hata ukiandikwa sinili kuona. Kwa za garire unapelekaga inakuwa kama yangu. Yani, it's your right. You feel it is my right. And the point, if you don't want to feel anger, commit those things and your rights to God. Hauna right. Of late I've been thinking. 
Siku wewe utakufa ama siku nitakufa. Hiyo right yako itabaki na nani? Na umekuwa ukiringa naye. Hauna. Kwanza ni watu watakubadilisha nguo wakuweka <laughs> wakidecide kukuweka nguo ni sawa. Right zako. Na mwenye wewe atakuwa amekuchukua. Kwa hivyo hiki kimwili kinafanya uringe na useme haki zako kitawachwa hapa. Commit those things to the Lord. Because most of our ta- of the time is our righteous indignation. Simply our pride is the one that is hurt. Moses said, must we f- must we fetch you water out of the rock that is what Moses said because of anger. Our anger comes from in proper view of self. Moses is taught to speak to but he kicks the rock and he's so annoyed by the people. No more kadamutaira mai. Must I take water from the rock for you? And sometimes we get to that level. Oh God help us. That giant called anger that I can deal with it. Number B, transfer your right to God. 1 Corinthians 6:19 to 20. What? No you not your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit which is in you which you have of God and you are not your own. For you are bought with the price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit which are God's. Number two, correct yourself before you correct others. Listen, oh, if I, there is a message I can preach to you and speak to myself is that one. Listen. Katu skiza. Skiza tu. Skiza tu. Matthew 7, 3 to 5, you can read it for yourself at your own time. Because we usually blame our anger on others. But this is simply, it cannot be the case because others only have the ability to draw out of us what is already inside. If you are not a man of anger, it will not come to you. No one can really make you angry. And I will say this. If you become angry, it is because you had anger already within you. I told you, you are listening with one ear, waiting to catch the person. You are already said. Anger, ulikuwa nayo. Uyu ni kui provoke, tu ni kui, ni kusema bebe kam, bebe kam. You know that person who says bebe kam, bebe kam. No one can really. Therefore, don't allow someone else to do it. Allow God to help you to put away anger. Number three, constructively allow your anger allow your anger to reveal hidden areas of pride and self pity So allow it. If it comes to you, allow it so that you can identify that is my pride. Hiyo, ni, nimekuwa nikijivunia hiyo. Hiyo, kwa mfano, ukinunua gari mpya. Mpya. Hata iko na makaratasi. Alafu ukija inagongwa. Utaona self ikitoka ndani. Wewe kijana, kama ni kijana amegonga. Unagonga gari yangu. Gari mpya. Unajua ni ya pesa gapi? Sasa Nikiburi tu kwa sababu nimekwambia siku utalala hata hiyo wataka uendesha uwajui so let's give it to god let's learn to give it to god evaluate yourself and evaluate yourself well because if you do it will help you and you can evaluate yourself by looking at 1 Corinthians 13 verse 4 to 7 where it says charity suffereth long and is kind, charity envieth not, charity vaunteth not itself, it is not puffed up, doth not behave itself unseemingly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinks no evil. Verse 6, rejoiceth not in equity, but rejoiceth in the truth. Verse 7, beareth all things, believes all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. The point is, if you love the Lord that much, we can evaluate yourself with the love of God so that we don't get out of hand very, very quickly. 
Hallelujah. Amen. I want to conclude there because I know that God is going to help each one of us. The, wo the world should be able to expect you as a Christian to be distinctly different from what they are accustomed to. When you are mistreated, are you responding as expected? When you are, or is your response a clear indication that you are filled with something other than yourself? We are peculiar people. There's a song like that one we used to sing. And the singer says, we smile when things are wrong. We shed tears when we are happy. That's what the writer is trying to tell us. As Christians, we should be different. They have annoyed you. You have refused to be annoyed. Do you know you can refuse to be annoyed? And somebody keeps on saying things and you are just smiling. And finally, he will tell you something like, when do we name to a sampligani? Sampligani, you know? And I, I know I'm finishing with this. Um, my time I know is up, but I'm finishing with this. I used to have a friend who would argue about anything. Do you know there are people who argue about anything? And I'm not that kind of, I don't argue about anything. E even some of the things that I know, if you push me so much, I'll leave it. I will allow you to win. So here we are. We are still having a lot of gorillas. And I, uh, by the way, I was in one of those gorilla movements. But ours was to preach the gospel. God unites every redeemed individual, liberating lives and souls. That's what uh, gorilla meant. So we had many nations that were not independent then in the early 70s. So we do come and we are debating. He had a friend who is a good friend of mine. Every time they met, they would argue anything. Now, now, there were good debaters, anything. You would propose, oppose, and they would sit for hours with the points and points and points and points. They would bore me. They would bore me. Because I would cook for them. They are still arguing. They would eat. Na unajua vijana mukikula munaosha hapo hapo. So you cook for them, the bado debate, kwa hivyo unaenda unaosha, bado debate. Unapika chai, bado debate. Sasa hui rafiki yangu wakija anikuta wakati hui rafiki yangu ambaye ni wakudebate hayuko. Akireta topic, in emotion, na mwambia you are right. Coca Cola ni wabaya, you are right. Multinational, you are right. Paka anasema, you are not intellectual. Say, you are right. And the guy gets so offended. You can refuse to be annoyed. So you can. Don't allow anger to kill you because anger is a giant that can destroy us. Our Heavenly Father, the Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, help us to put away anger. Not to put it under, but to put, to, to, to put it away from our lives, from our situation that come, and that we will allow God to help us. If there will be any anger, it will be an anger with the purpose. And when the purpose is over, it is over with that reaction of that anger to the praise and to the glory of your dear name. I want to give you honor and to give you praise. Heavenly Father, I know there could be people that are angry with many things. Some people are angry with themselves, angry with this government, angry with the political situation, angry with the corona, angry that they have lost a job, angry because they have nothing to do, angry upon their spouses and upon their children. There are people angry all over. And Father, us, they have heard the message. And I'm speaking to you, if that is the level that you are in, you feel so annoyed and anger about situations and circumstances, I want to ask you, would you pray this prayer today after me? Lord Jesus, I surrender. I commit myself to you and my right to you. And I say that you have bought me with a price. I belong to you. Help me to overcome the anger and the annoyance that is within me. I want to be a Christian to live holy before you. 
Help me from today, for this is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord bless you. May you have a month, anger-free month. Kill that giant in Jesus' name. Amen.